floor. Thank you. And I'm glad you're here to listen to my presentation today. Uh, I'm gonna try and cover 100 tools. It's actually gonna be more like 50 probably due to time. Uh, but some of the best tools that I've found and that have been used by people in the security industry for a while now. Uh, <clears throat> let me tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, let me find my button to bring up my slide. Uh, I'm Josh Galvez. I work as an offensive security operator at LogMeIn. Um, been in the industry for around 15 years or more uh, in security directly and in IT for much longer. Um, I have my personal credentials uh, involve much experience in the community at DEF CON, at SAINT CON, uh, presenting at various conferences and uh, doing what I love. So uh, we're getting into it. Uh, these tools are things that I pulled and for my own usage and then talking to many security industry professionals uh, and ask them, hey, what do you use every day? What's the essential tools? What are the things that you have to use uh, to make your life better? And these are some of the answers that came back. And so we're gonna go through them. I'm gonna start with some networking tools, stuff that uh, lets you see stuff on the wire. Of course, uh, Nmap is a awesome tool. If you haven't used it, it is a network mapper and it lets you scan a network or a PC or a host and enumerate the ports and the services available on that workstation. Um, I had some fun out of that this morning. Uh, let me share my screen here. And I'll show you an example, a live example, of uh, scanning my own media server on my network. If I change my windows I'm sharing here. to my terminal. Uh, uh, Philippe, I'm changing my uh, screen. Do we have to pull that back on to share? Yes, thank you. So sharing my uh, terminal here, for example, for a live share, um, I scanned my open media vault, my media server, and it found a whole bunch of ports open that I didn't even realize were running. Uh, I should do this more often and in investigating my own network. Uh, and it discovered multiple ports here and multiple services. Uh, identified particularly the version of SSH that was running, uh, which, you know, which highlights that it's Debian, um, and many sort of other services. Uh, and that is super powerful. Uh, I'm gonna switch one more, more time here back to my slides. Uh, this. And I think I'll probably just take my slide a little longer. Okay. So back to my slides here. Thank you. Um, NMAP has also super powerful tools. Uh, some of the basic flags, some of the things you should learn uh, with any tools, what it can do. So here's some examples for scanning for IPs, uh, identifying operating systems, or doing a mass scan of all the ports. Uh, one of my favorite flags is, of course, if you're using NMAP interactively, is the dash V to make it more verbose. Next tool, Wireshark. Uh, Wireshark is by far one of my favorites uh, in all sorts of worlds, and, and whether you're offensive or defensive, uh, and you're able to find out all sorts of information about the environment that you're in, uh, just passively listening. Uh, this morning, I was testing this again and saying, okay, what's on my network? And I found out that I have a spanning tree protocol, STP, running on my network. I didn't even realize that my uh, Google Fiber uh, router uh, was running STP, a great attack. Uh, surface to be investigated. Wireshark is cool. Um, it not only will does network protocol decoding, but it can decode many, many other protocols. So whether or not you're if you want to capture USB, uh, you can have Wireshark capture USB packets uh, off your Windows or your Mac or your Linux workstations, and you can decode USB protocols. You can decode Bluetooth. You can decode uh, CAN bus from automobiles. So Wireshark is a great protocol decoder, uh, primarily used for networks, but for many other uh, interfaces as well. So get to know Wireshark and use it. Uh, you'll find that you a surprising amount of data that's not encrypted and easily decoded. 
Okay, so that's it for network tools. So let's go into some defensive tools. Uh, of course, your logs. Um, many people use Splunk or an Elk stack or Graylog. Uh, all of these are great tools for uh, gathering your log data. Um, get to know your log interfaces, just, um, how you can parse those logs, how you can identify the information in them. If you don't, um, from a defensive side, you'll be pretty sad. So uh, there's a lot of powerful things you can do with Splunk. Um, even as a home user or as a beginning user in, uh, in security, um, Splunk has a free tier uh, that you can th throw you know, hundreds of megabytes of logs into it daily um, and get to know it and its features and its powers. Okay, so back, continuing on, autopsy. Autopsy is a cool tool. It's uh, for digital forensics and it can take a disk image, um, whether it be from an iPhone, an Android, a Windows workstation, uh, any device you want. You take a disk image into autopsy and it will identify and parse out tons of data from that disk image. It will identify pictures, applications, documents, uh, deleted files, hidden partitions, et cetera, et cetera, um, and let you parse through it and carve out the data you're looking for. So uh, from a defensive side, if you're look, you've got a disk image, you've got a machine that you're concerned about uh, that's gone offline, um, and you've got a mirror, a DD of that drive, uh, autopsy is a great way to tear it apart. Uh, that being said, as a complement, another tool you want to look at is volatility. Volatility uh, handles similar to autopsy, but on the memory side. So it's a sh there's a shocking amount of data and private data and personal information and malware that's running or anything else that sits in the RAM of your workstation. And so if you ever are curious or you've say, you know, a compromised workstation, uh, it's important that you take a memory snapshot of that so that you can tear it apart. Uh, Volatility has all sorts of plugins that let you do things like even extract the SSH keys from a running workstation or running the server. So if you've got an active SSH session to a device, a Volatility will let you extract the SSH keys from it so that you can then use those SSH keys in Wireshark to decrypt that traffic. And so what's was encrypted, now you've got the SSH keys, you can decrypt and you see what's being, what, what is taking place live in that tunnel. It's pretty awesome. Uh, so how do you get these memory dumps? Uh, multiple ways. Uh, Linux memory extractor called Lime is a great tool. It works on Android as well. Uh, it lets you insert a kernel module uh, uh, that's portable and then dump the memory. Very awesome. Uh, on the Windows side, uh, there's a toolkit called WinPNM uh, that does something similar and will let you dump the process memory or crash dump or core dump. Um, so that you can then tear it apart in whatever tooling you have. Uh, but volatility is awesome and one that uh, I've had good experiences with. Okay, so still on the defensive side, uh, you need some vulnerability assessment tools. There's tons and tons of options out there. Um, I've, you know, the Nes Nessus is a uh, industry standard, something that's been around for a long time, uh, has some free options out there. But uh, something that's really quick and easy to let you see your attack surface and see a footprint of what's in your network and available. Okay, moving on. Uh, let's talk about some intelligence tools. Uh, stuff that can be used for open source intelligence. Things to go find stuff out on the internet and to identify some common problems, uh, find out information that's available. So, uh, one of the most awesome tools out there, what's well, something that I found extremely useful, is Shodan. Shodan is a cool tool because they take and they scan the entire internet regularly. They scan for open ports, they log what they find, uh, HTTP headers, uh, H uh, index files, uh, headers on all four sorts of various, uh, various other services, both TCP and UDP. Um, so, and I use it frequently. Um, so Shodan, uh, one of my most recent uses is uh, I was researching a vulnerability into, uh, a vulnerability on uh, the end phase Envoy uh, solar panel microinverter systems. Uh, they're, they're, these are systems that uh, connect your solar panels to your house mains and they log uh, your usage to either sell back to the power company or just for your own personal monitoring stats. Uh, but these devices are smart 
And so they'll get plugged into a home network or, or connect wirelessly and uh, are able to give you a web interface like everything else to detect that data. Well, uh, in research uh, found that the on-phase envoy has a hard-coded well, hard algorithm to generate a unique password for each device. And that's based off of the serial number of the device. Well, um, these devices also use UPnP and will punch holes in uh, your router. As you can see here, my shortened short search, uh, simply searching for on-phase envoy um, pulls up you know, the 1,987, 1,000 devices here uh, that um, are online and exposing HTTP services um, that all happen to be vulnerable to some CVEs out there uh, with default passwords. So uh, people could log in and do all sorts of things to these devices. But so Shodan has a nice archive of that uh, to find out information. Uh, whether you want to search your own networks or you're looking for a count of other vulnerabilities, uh, Shodan is a great way to gather intelligence. Uh, another tool uh, that I enjoy is hybrid-analysis.com. Uh, it integrates with VirusTotal, uh, runs applications in CrowdStrike or uh, application databases. Um, it runs things in various other VMs and will give you a full report on an application. It'll dump out and say, this file has this behavior. It's flagged by these malware. Uh, it has these indicators in it. Um, Hyper Analysis does multiple scans from various services and, and, to, and then uh, aggregates those uh, details. So uh, from a defensive or intelligence point of view, it's a great tool to tear apart a unknown file and look for what might be known about it by others. Uh, another tool uh, similar to Shodan is census.io. Um, very similar tool. Uh, once again, they, they take a census of the entire internet and gather that data. So about some expensive tools. Uh, WP Scan, uh, WordPress is the primary, uh, is the predominant uh, content management system on the internet these days. It's simple to set up, um, but it often gets out of date. And uh, if you want to be aware of what's going on with a WordPress instance you've come across, or you're trying to defend your own, uh, I strongly suggest you use WP Scan on your WordPress instances. It pulls out tons and tons of useful information about an instance, um, is able to help you detect what plugins are used, what themes are used, either for your own uh, identifying the surface attack or that will reference uh, known vulnerabilities and report them to you. Uh, Nikto, uh, web server scanner. So Nikto is a great tool. Um, it is very effective at identifying vulnerabilities in uh, known versions of Apache, Nginx, et cetera, and identifying many um, misconfigurations or problems in host configurations. Uh, here's a simple scan of a random domain of mine that I uh, did yesterday. That looks like, okay, I should probably run some updates on it. Um, but identified all sorts of uh, interesting directories that uh, are low-hanging fruits, um, identifying uh, the versions of Apache and OpenSL it's using, which is an old version of PHP that's still installed on the host. Um, so Nikto is a great tool for web server scanners. I strongly suggest you uh, give it a try. Uh, Hashcat, if you're into password cracking, uh, Hashcat is cool. It does features a CPU cracker and a GPU cracker, um, so it can use whatever resources you have available. And it is the de facto standard these days um, for password cracking. And so if you have a hash of a password either taken from a domain, uh, a, a domain controller or a uh, MySQL database or wherever you happen to find your hashes, uh, Hashcat's the tool to run to crack those. It will do a simple brute force, but what's more important about Hashcat is that it can take word lists and then take rule sets to apply to those word lists and will let you create uh, all sorts of variations and rules to alter your brute force attempts. So you're not just trying every single letter and every single combination, but you're using intelligence to crack those passwords quickly. Uh, Metasploit. Uh, the de facto framework for uh, exploits. Um, nearly every CVE that gets exploits uh, will end up in a Metasploit database and uh, have an easy to exploit tool uh, that you can then utilize um, from a CLI to get a, want to get and maintain and uh, post-exploit to uh, exfiltrate your data. So uh, Metasploit is an awesome tool. It's built in Ruby. It runs on Linux, runs on Mac OS. You can run it in uh, Windows uh, subsystem for Linux. 
um, and it's a great tool for uh, exploiting environments. Um, once again, that you can spend days on a Metasploit training, but this is just an introduction to give you a moment to say, hey, oh yeah, I should check out that tool. Uh, Burp Suite. I want to show you a little bit about Burp Suite, so I will go ahead and switch my display here and uh, give you a quick demo. But Burp Suite is a very handy tool, uh, even in the non-commercial free version, um, but the pro version is totally worth the money that it costs, um, to um, manipulate and edit and change uh, HTTP requests on the fly. So let's stop sharing my screen here and switch to Burp Suite. Just a moment while I wait for it to launch. It's starting kind of slow this morning. Okay, it's gonna to take too long. I don't know why it's not starting. Thank you, live demos. And I'm just gonna go back to my slides. But so Burp Suite's cool. Um, let me make sure that I am presenting here. Emery or Philippe, uh, can you go ahead and present my slides again? I thank you, appreciate it. So, um, Burp Suite's awesome because basically what you're able to do is you're able to use a proxy uh, to intercept your HTTP communications, and it also does WebSockets. Uh, the thing I want to point out to you with Burp Suite that makes it really simple uh, that a lot of people miss is that there's a built in web browser. So if you click on the proxy tab and then go to intercept, you're able to um, select and click open browser. Um, with this, it will launch the built-in browser that already has the appropriate certificates installed for uh, HTTPS interception and will allow you to easily modify a request before it gets sent to the server or modify a response before it gets back to your browser. And with the built-in browser that's based on Chrome, uh, it makes it really easy. Uh, really lowers the barrier to entry to manipulation. Another tool that's similar to Burp Suite uh, that isn't built in Java and is a little bit more native is Fiddler. Uh, it's an alternative. Um, people have their preferences, um, so check it out. Check out Fiddler. If you're working in APIs, it, whether it doesn't matter what kind of API, uh, but web-based API, um, REST APIs, JSON APIs, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you want to check out Postman. Postman makes it really simple to parse Swagger files, uh, parse XML uh, explanations, um, and then to be able to uh, modify those requests and work with those APIs for fuzzing, et cetera. Uh, Postman is a extremely useful and convenient tool for that approach. Uh, from the red team and offensive side, uh, you want to make sure you're documenting your approach and your reporting. The uh, hardest part about that is gathering the evidence, gathering the screenshots, recording the times um, as you do it. And so a tool that has proven extremely useful for many people is a tool developed by um, the crew at uh, Verizon, the Paranoids, and it's called A-Shirt. And it is a tool for just that purpose. It has a server base uh, that has a really easy to use front end, and then it also has a agent that you can gather on your workstations to gather screenshots, gather terminal logs, et cetera, et cetera, and to correlate all that uh, to make your report writing be simple. So let's talk about some reverse engineering tools. Um, if you are reverse engineering some Windows binaries, uh, .NET framework, or even Mono, uh, I strongly suggest DNSpy. Uh, it get you most of the time get some very very clean readable code uh, almost back as close as you can to source without comments so uh, totally check out dnspy for reverse engineering and decompiling uh, .NET binaries um, a few years ago the uh, United States NSA released Ghidra um, Ghidra is an extremely powerful uh, decompiler and disassembler um, that works for multiple platforms and so be it 
Windows, Linux, Mac OS, et cetera. It's built in Java, um, but also will decompile and uh, disassemble multiple processor and platforms, uh, everything from MIPS all the way up to x86, x64, and ARM64, et cetera, et cetera. Um, lots of community plugin is supported it, and it, it's very, very effective. The same while you're decompiling and uh, disassembling, uh, IDA Pro is the de facto, it has been for a long time until Gija came around. Um, but they recently released a free version that's actually useful. And with their cloud decompiler, uh, it's very effective and can turn up some very pretty results. So uh, if you are a student or you're getting inter in started in the uh, security industry, do check out IDA free um, with their cloud decompiler. It's worth checking out. Um, for Mac OS, I've actually come to really love Binary Ninja, uh, though it's not at all ex specific to it. Um, it will work on multiple platforms. Um, it's relatively cheap and it's a newcomer to the field, but their uh, AI and machine learning mechanisms and the way that it presents an, a binary and application um, is very, very useful. Um, I feel like they do a great job. Uh, still coming along on their uh, decompiler, but their disassembler is awesome. Now, if you are decompiling or uh, needing to approach uh, Mac Mako binaries for Mac OS, um, you do not want to skip Hopper. Hopper specializes in uh, Mac OS stuff. Uh, it'll do other binaries, but uh, specializes in Mac OS and object Objective-C decompilation. Uh, so check out Hopper. Um, it makes things a lot clearer sometimes. <laughs> totally worth it. So everything else. Some of the other tools, some of those things that uh, as a security pro, you don't want to miss. Learn SQL. Uh, yeah, the structured query language, the thing that you use to talk to SQL databases or MySQL or Postgres, uh, learn SQL. Um, SQL is going to give you a foot up in many, many jobs and many tools. Uh, whether you're trying to exploit web applications and you're doing SQL injection, or you're just trying to understand the data that's available to you and you need to parse it or categorize it or work with it. Uh, SQL has helped me for years and has come in useful many, many jobs. Um, but just because I know and understand how to join, how to union, how to do subqueries, how to write functions and views and, and use all of the basic SQL. So take a minute, uh, take a few days, learn SQL so that you can familiarize yourself with it. And I promise it'll help your life. Uh, another tool to trade uh, that shocked me, I never thought of that, but was Excel. Uh, I, as I queried everybody and I said, hey, what tools are essential to your day-to-day -day job? What do you use? And the answer came back numerous times was Excel. More than just using a spreadsheet, but being able to write macros, being able to write functions, being able to use a little bit of VB script, or just even mail these advanced functions in, a, in an Excel cell um, to parse and pivot table, et cetera, et cetera, has provided extreme value to many people in the security industry in, in parsing logs in identifying information and generating useful reports. Uh, awesome tool, uh, CyberChef. This one is built by the uh, GCHQ, which is the British Intelligence Agency. Um, and it, it's extremely useful for handling data. Um, let's go ahead and try this one more time. Let's see if I can do a screen share. I'll give you some examples of what uh, CyberShift can do. This one here on screen is an example of uh, extracting URLs from an Emotet uh, malware document. And so you drop, you just drag a, a malware doc into CyberChef, and this will extract all the URLs and defang them and make them safe for you to see. But let me show you an example of some of the other cool things they can do. Uh, let's try this one more time. So this is a demo worth seeing. Stop sharing. Share screen. And so the URL that I had in my slide there is actually a URL to a repo that has uh, hundreds of uh, useful recipes for uh, CyberChef. I'll pull that back up in a minute. Um, but here's my CyberChef screen. And that's like that's sharing properly. Okay. So a CyberChef is cool because you take some basic input here. This is my test input. And it lets you drag functions. So you can take an input, uh, such as my test input, and you can say, let's convert it to base64. 
and it'll give you instantly here in the output the base64 output of your string. Let's take, for example, let's say I was trying to uh, exfiltrate a file from a server, and I have a random image here, and I drag it into my, and on the server I take, hey, cat this file, type it to base64, and then it gives me some base64 output of a, file, of a string. Well, I could then paste that string into my input, and I could say, let's take it, so let's see, main input, and let's take it to base64. And so the two base 64, and it's going to give me okay. This file is going to crash my browser. There we go. So there we go. Uh, there's base 64 output. Well, I could copy that base 64 output in my input, and it would display display the file. Um, base, uh, CyberChef is awesome. All sorts of tooling. Uh, handles files and media formats, handles text and all their formats. Uh, spend some time learning, clicking through here and learning the various tools. It can do all sorts of things with the uh, SSL and PEM key parsing. It can do all sorts of encryption and decryptions, uh, everything from uh, ROT13 uh, encoding <laughs> to encryption such as AES tooling. Uh, even they have implementers for stupid things like Enigma Machine. Um, but they can decode text, parse URLs, uh, detect file types, uh, even do just do magic on a file and say, hey, tell me about this. What do you see? and it will automatically report back to you. CyberChef is awesome. Um, it's a tool that uh, it gets used for many things. And um, you know, for when you're not scripting, you're not writing your own tooling instantly, uh, CyberChef is a great way to provide an introduction to that. OK, my slides should be back here on screen in a moment. Uh, Philippe, if you could uh, pull those slides back on screen for me. Thank you so much. Um, and so once again, uh, for example, Base64 is a, so uh, back here, that tool, that uh, URL on the uh, uh, Matt Not Max uh, repository uh, for CyberChef has a lot of cool recipes that you want to check out. Base64 is a useful tool. I use it all the time in exfiltrating data between servers, uh, piping stuff between places. Uh, it basically takes a binary of any type and is able to represent it in a simple, copy-pastable ASCII text that you can then is portable. Uh, another tool that's important to learn that's useful is curl. Curl is more than just a grab an HTTP website. It supports dozens of protocols, uh, some of them rarer than you'd expect, uh, some of them really common, like, oh, I didn't know it did that. Uh, for example, curl can do IMAP or pop, uh, or older stuff like gopher. Um, so learn curl. Uh, go read the man pages for curl. It has dozens and dozens and dozens of options that make it, can make it very convenient to do all sorts of things with it. Uh, but don't forget about wget either. Uh, wget is simpler than curl. Uh, it lacks a lot fewer options. But one of the cool features that it does have is it has recursive download. So it can parse an entire page and download all the files that are linked on it, or all the images, or any of the content. So uh, learn how to use curl and wget. Uh, another tool that's way useful is jq. Um, I'm not going to do a demo here, here because it parts just jumping between uh, presentations and Windows is proving to be a challenge. Uh, but jq is cool. It allows you to take a JSON file and make it pretty, which is useful, first of all. Uh, but beyond that, it lets you parse it. And so you can see in the example of my screenshot here uh, that I have uh, it piped to JQ, and I'm just showing the, the data element from every object in this array. Uh, so I could even go farther, and I can say, oh, show the data element, and then show me just all of the account IDs, or et cetera, et cetera. And so it lets you parse and filter and search and process JSON data in a structured way uh, that without having to write it in some other prescripting language. Uh, learn the Windows sub sub subsystem for Linux. If you're on Windows, uh, they've recently added the WSL that uh, gives you lots of capabilities to run Linux processes. Uh, so you can use GNU tools and do lots of this in an environment that's comfortable to you. Uh, another tooling that uh, I've recently grown in love with is called proxy chains. 
Proxy Chains is a, a Linux uh, framework that allows you to hook the network functions of a binary so you can redirect it to a proxy. So if you have an application that you're trying to investigate and want to understand its behaviors, but it doesn't respect or have any proxy settings, uh, this lets you do it at a lower level so that you can then redirect it to a proxy for uh, investigation, such as in uh, Burp Suite or in other tooling. Uh, don't forget to virtualize. Um, all the time I talk to people say, well, I can't run those tools. And like, well, do it in a virtual machine. If you have a Mac, run VMware, VirtualBox, or QMU. If you've got Windows or Linux, you can run all of these as well. And spin up a Mac OS virtual machine on your Windows box. Spin up a uh, MS-DOS virtual machine. Spin up a Mac OS, uh, uh, any virtual machine. And you can run this whole operating system in your in your base operating system and, and run these tools that may not be allowed or that uh, you may not have access to. So don't forget to virtualize. Uh, learn to use grep. Grep is another one of those basic uh, command line tools. It's available on Mac OS or Linux uh, or Windows with WSL and it lets you search and parse and use regular expressions. Um, grep is extremely powerful. Um, there's lots of various versions of it and expressions of it. Um, this URL will let you compare them, but learn to use grep. Uh, one other thing that came up all the time that people loved was their advanced text editors, uh, VS Code. Uh, Notepad++ on Windows, Sublime Text across all platforms, uh, BB Edit on Mac OS. These tools all support advanced uh, Perl, uh, Perl compatible or regex type uh, search and replaces and have plugin systems. So learn to use an advanced text editor, uh, learn its plugins and learn the powers and the tools that are available behind it for you and which and the things that you do. Okay, so getting close to the end here, uh, but I want to talk about the collections. Uh, a lot of these tools uh, you can find piecemeal or are already installed on your environments, uh, but there's uh, distributions of Windows and Linux that uh, also come with them uh, pre-installed for your convenience. Uh, Kali Linux, uh, once upon a time known as Backtrack. Uh, it was a tool that, um, it is a collection of tools that you can run into a virtual machine or install bare metal that has a lot of this stuff pre-installed and uh, also lets you install it with package managers. So if you want a Linux tool that has this, check out Kali. If you want a Windows environment that has a lot of this tooling and already installed, then check out the Commando VM. So it's deployed by Mandiant, um, but it is a set of scripts that lets you convert your Windows installation into a a penetration testing and security distribution. It installs a package manager, it grabs tons of packages and sets it up into an environment that is effective. Uh, in the same note, they have Flare VM, which is for the defensive side or incident response side of the house. And so it's a lot of common, other, a lot of common tools, but then uh, tools that are more focused for uh, the blue team. Okay, and finally, um, play capture the flag. Yeah, if you are trying to learn security tooling, um, Capture the flag is a great way to do it. In a capture the flag, especially here at Hackfest and either the beginner CTF or the actual CTF for with the competitive or the uh, non-competitive play mode, um, it is structured to allow you to learn new tools, to learn new ways to accomplish things. So if you want to learn some new tooling, play capture the flag. Uh, be curious. One of the primary attributes and primary tools that is effective for me and that I find people ask for all the time is somebody that's curious. Um, they want people that ask questions. They want people that will dig into it and try to understand why and how it works. So uh, those tools of asking, well, why does it do this? How did it authenticate me on this site when I was already on that site? How how does this packet get from here to here? Ask those questions and be curious. Those tools will be something that you should use every day as a security professional. And that's all the slides I have. I got through those way fast because my demos are broken. Um, but uh, thank you for coming to listen to my talk. And uh, thank you. Hopefully some of these tools were useful for you and introduce you to something that you hadn't seen before. Um, as far as questions, um, I'll be in Discord.
and take questions there. Looks like there's some comments here in the channel. Thank you. Yeah, if you have question now, can put it in the comment in the channel. I will put it on the screen, so uh, just can uh, answer them. Or, like he said, we're gonna put it uh, afterward. Go in the Q and A. So, do we have question? No, we just have nice comment like awesome. Thank you. <laughs> okay. I appreciate the time and uh, my stupid demos were broken, so uh, I was a lot faster than I expected. But hopefully, uh, this content was helpful for you. And then uh, I guess Philip, your next uh, presentations in about fifteen minutes. Yeah, yeah, okay. I, yeah twenty minutes. And it's at thirty. So, so thank you, thank you again, and. Uh, if you do have questions, go ask them in uh, uh, QA, uh, talk, uh, Q&A presentations. Uh, it's okay. the best way, uh, the best place to ask questions. Uh, I'm sure some people going to want some URL and things like that from yep. some of the cool so URLs. So. And I'll post the slides. Oh, the slides also. OK, thank you very much. Thank you. Have a nice day.